So, straight on to our next presenter. Please put your hands together and welcome Nick Burnett. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Hi, my name is Nick Burnett, uh, obviously Mastermind 12. Uh, I've seen this slightly differently. I've seen it as a game of two halves. And I thought this was quite apt because the meaning of it is, it's, you know, it suggests that the losing team or individual may well make a comeback in the second half. Um, so, so anyway, I've, you'll probably see the results uh, pretty soon. But what I'd like to do before I go into my background, um, can anyone tell me where this picture could have been taken? London Bridge, bang on. Now, actually, this photo could have been taken in any city in the UK, in any city in the developed countries. Um, it's basically, it's the corporate world, it's the rat race. These people are about to plug into the economic machine, and it was where I was about three months ago. Uh, now, my background is, after graduating, I did six years in the tech and comms industry. I then went on into uh, management consulting, all of which gave me lots of travel. It gave me kind of exciting roles and projects, working with big names, both nationally and globally. Um, big challenges. It paid pretty well. So, so why sideline this? I mean, things were going pretty good, right? But the problem is the, the, the issues I had are the same issues these people have here. So some of the observations I picked up when I was looking at this photo, overall, it's quite, it's quite dark in there. And, you know, the corporate world can be a pretty dark place to work. Um, plus, people's heads are down, they're looking down, their faces are pretty, you know, downbeat. Um, and, and it's exactly where I was. So I wasn't happy like these guys uh, as well. And the reason being is because my, my health was going south and I didn't have time to do the things I wanted to do. Uh, and when I did have time, I was too tired anyway to kind of have the motivation to do them. So then came along, you know, I guess in a way, the answer. And uh, a friend handed me a copy of Property Magic by Simon Zucci. Uh, so I was you know, a little bit skeptical. I read it for the first time. And I was like, OK, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I then started to reread it. And it started to chip away at certain things. Like I had limiting beliefs about certain things. Um, I also had a fair bit of risk aversion coming from management consulting. You know, that's kind of a default. Um, but also, it changed my attitude towards property. Now, I always thought, there's no way I'm going to be able to own in London. There's no way I'm going to be able to kind of make any impact in property. Um, plus, I hated the idea of mortgages and debt. I mean, absolutely hated it. Um, but then, after reading it a couple of times, next thing I know, I'm sitting in front of Simon. I'm on his quick start program. Uh, that obviously incentivized me enough to go on to Mastermind Accelerator. And clearly, that led to this um, today. So. That was fantastic, and it was given to me, this book, um, by a certain man, and uh, he, he was also the reason that, um, that kind of inspired me to come here today. That man is this guy here, Mr. Stephen Marshall. Uh, ironically, he was stood here about a year ago today, giving his top five speech on MN10. Um, don't be fooled by his boyish good looks. He's actually a lot older than you think. Uh, <laughs> but, but he is, he is uh, I know you're watching, Steve, so apologies. But um, anyway, massively, massively kind of grateful for, for his input. So we, you know, we ended up having some conversations around property. My kind of original aim in the summer last year was to get a couple of student lets, maybe in Leicester, because with my money, I could afford to buy a couple of places there for cheap. Um, with my money, uh, kind of I, I hasten to add. And you know, through conversations, we actually realized that we shared the same values. We wanted the same kind of outcomes in life. And, and then we started to work together. So where we're at today is we have our company, Positive Property Group in London. It's, um, you know, it, was, it was formed, I guess, officially very recently, but its kind of true inception dates back to last year. And it's, it's going well. And it's, you know, at a very high level, what do we do? We do HMOs in London for young professionals. Um, and we do them pretty well. Our strategy, it's, it's all about offering the kind of the, the basically the great products to young professionals in London. Um, they're all kind of high yielding, they're inner London, um, great cash flow for each property, and the capital growth prospects are amazing. I mean, I don't know if you've heard this week, the, the house prices in London have gone up by 9.7%. Um, well, not the prices, but the value, which is huge, and that's why we play in London. Uh, and, of course, the returns on investment are pretty strong as well. 
Our target area is the Docklands uh, and some surrounding postcodes as well. And the reason why we've picked the Docklands is it's pretty simple. I mean, you've got Canary Wharf there, major financial hub of the UK. Um, and, and also around that area, you've got, you've got great shopping, you've got great attractions. So it's, it's very kind of attractive as an area. And most of our tenants work there as well. So the ones which don't will then commute into the city or to central London. So the commute time is pretty short. And love them or hate them, tenants are the lifeblood of any HMO business. And our tenants, um, you know, they provide the cash, which then, you know, turns into the kind of revenue um, and the income for our business, which leads me nicely on into what's been achieved this year since I started Mastermind. Uh, my, my original aim was to start top to bottom, but I'm pretty sure you're all looking at the bottom row right now, so let me just start there and work back up. Um, so we've added nearly 40 tenants to the portfolio. Uh, we purchased one and a half million pounds worth of property. Uh, we've raised the best part of half a million in investment. Uh, the profit per calendar month comes in at just shy of 10K. And in terms of what comes to positive property, it's basically it's about an extra 70K a year. Um, now, coming into this, I didn't have any property experience. I didn't own any property. Uh, so whilst I would have liked to have done a lot better, I'm a little bit kind of self-critical. I guess this isn't too shabby. So, so I'm pretty kind of pretty proud. But so. <laughs> thank you. A couple of, couple of things to point here. Where I've got gaps in the numbers, these are three managed properties, which we don't own, but we look after on behalf of landlords. Um, and also the bottom three here. So we've got uh, two flats in E14 and a, and a large house in E16 completing very soon. So we get the keys for the first flat next week, um, the second flat two, uh, the week after, and then the house two weeks after that. They all need work. Um, uh, you know, we've got things running sim simultaneously, which is a little bit daunting. But it's also massively exciting, not least the fact they're pulling in the best part of a K per month for us, which is great. But this didn't really kick in for me until um, halfway through the journey on Mastermind. And something happened at half time, at the half time point, which really changed everything. And that something was this man here, our very own Andy Hayes. Uh, so he stood up here, and actually, I think he did it yesterday to MN13. He stood up and he gave a really inspiring speech. It was also very comforting for a lot of people as well. But for me, it was a massive kick up the arse. And I was like, because I was complacent. I was in my job, you know, whilst I was working abroad and, and things, um, I was too comfortable. And I went away from that session with one thing playing in my head over and over again whilst I was on the train on the way back to London. And th it was the same statement. It was, I can't keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. And it's exactly what I was doing. So um, it also coincided, as I mentioned, with being working abroad. So daytime job, um, you know, working out in, in Europe, and evening job was, pro uh, was the property stuff. So it did put a strain on the business, um, and it was difficult. So when I got back to the UK, uh, I decided to take a six-month sabbatical from my employer, uh, which started three months ago. And that has had... Uh, a pretty significant change. I mean, I can't, I can't be modest about that. It's been huge. Um, and it's been fantastic. And results aside, the intangible benefits, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, have actually, they're probably more important, to be quite honest. So let me run through a couple of case studies. This is the first purchase I ever got. Um, Six-bed licensed HMO, not your average first time buy, but uh, nonetheless, it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, it's in the Royal Docks. Um, you can see Canary Wharf in the, uh, in the distance. But, you know, great quality there. The good thing about this one, we, we picked up the keys um, at about 12 p.m., I think, on the day, day we completed. Um, by about 8 p.m., we'd already filled the house. Uh, so we'd already set up a load of tenant viewings and things. The reason we could do that is because a week earlier, because of the relationship we had with the agent, which we got off market, by the way, um, he let us get into the property to dress it, to take photos, to market it. So we were, we were pretty much good to go. In terms of the numbers for this one, it was purchased at 377. Uh, the gross rents are 3,350. Take off bills and mortgage, so you're left with 13, 1,350 per month, um, which gives you a cash flow of 16,200 um, per year. 
the, the sum invested was about 70K. Now, I put some of my own money into this. Um, I now realize that was a bit of a mistake, but, you know, in hindsight. Um, and also, my ex-boss put some money into this, which was, which was also interesting. Um, <laughs> and he wants it back pretty soon as well, which is uh, also a little bit interesting. But anyway, anyway, great return on investment. Um, so let me just rattle through some others. This one is it's another multi-let, but the difference is it's one of our managed ones. Now, the quality we still try and maintain, you know, uh, dress it really well and stuff. We can't do anything structurally to it, um, which is a kind of a shame because the kitchen's, uh, you know, it's, a bit, it's a bit nasty, but, you know, we, we make best. Uh, in terms of the numbers, uh, the difference here is, you know, there's no mortgage. We've got the commercial agreement with the landlady, so we pay her 2300 um, The rents we get, 3300 So it basically means we get you know, 6.5K a year. Um, so, because we're not putting any money in, you can work out the return on investment on that one, so it's pretty good. Uh, but we have to put a little bit of money in to dress it, to get the crockery, and to make it look good and stuff. Um, so, if you can get a handful of those, I mean, 10 of those a year, you're pretty much laughing. The last case study, just quickly, this is a place, uh, a flat we're getting in a couple of weeks. This is the existing layout, so two beds. It's got, a, it's got a big kitchen, big living room. It's got the nastiest 80s ensuite you'd ever see in your life in the corner, uh, which we're going to destroy. Uh, this is what we're doing to it. So we're converting it to a five bed, five double bedrooms, three of which have en suites. Moving the kitchen over, trying to make best use of plumbing. And um, this one's great. I'm, I'm really excited about this one because it doesn't need a huge amount of work, but it's going to be great when it goes live. And the numbers, again, um, just kind of jumping to the bottom, 26.5K a year um, deposit and works money in, but it still gives an ROI of 20%. In terms of the company, where we're going from here, it's pretty much the same. You know, we want more HMOs. Uh, we want to double our portfolio at least next year. We're also looking into things like doing some flipping, doing some developments, you know, the commercial and resi stuff. Um, we're growing the team, so we're recruiting at the moment, which is really exciting. And that means we can uh, spend more time on our education, but also we can give back as well because we've amassed some seriously good knowledge about HMOs in London. Um, the network and the relationships goes hand in hand, but clearly, you know, we want to enjoy ourselves and, and do the things we love. So just quickly, what did I get personally from, from Masterminds? Uh, I've got kind of inputs on the left-hand side and outputs on the right. Again, sorry, there's still some management consultant in me. Um, but... The thing is, obviously, you get education. I mean, that's a given. But you also, from this, from this group here, um, you, get, you get incredible networking, but you get accountability, and you also get the challenge. And then that then translates into the kind of intangible benefits, which, which I got, but only if you do something about it. And the biggest change for me, um, and without doubt the most important, is I've been able to get a lot closer to my family. And by family, I mean kind of my mom, my dad, and my brother. Uh, that was completely unexpected and without doubt like the most special thing. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of kind of options, yeah, I've got options. If I think about you know, my decision to return to work next year, um, clearly I have a bit of a decision to make around that one. Um, you yeah, know, no more said on that. Uh, in terms of um, friends, of, there you go. <laughs> fun and friendships, yeah, I mean, I've made some great friends here. I've had, I've had a lot of fun, but it has been, has been tough. And I'd like to say I've gained a lot of time, but actually I've just filled that time for property stuff. Um, but at least it's my own, my own kind of stuff and my own doing. Um, just quickly to give some shout-outs, um, obviously to, to the kind of the MM12 family here. Um, it's been incredible. It's been great getting to know you, and I'll, I hope we continue this journey in the future. Um, also, big thanks to my buddies, um, especially to Amit for believing I could stand here today about six, seven months ago. Um, Big thanks to Mike Frisby, Mark Deering for the coaching and uh, mentoring, which is invaluable. Um, also, a massive thank you to the PIN team, to Andy, and also to Simon, my ultimate teacher. Um, but the biggest thanks does have to go back to Steve Marshall, because without his support, his guidance, and his challenge, I definitely wouldn't be standing here today. Uh, so, for the record, thank you, and you won't be hearing it again. So you can just watch the YouTube clip in the future. <laughs> Uh, some top tips, similar to what we've heard already, so there are some themes, and these do kind of go in order, actually. The first one is start believing in yourself. If you don't, no one else will. The second one is around focus, and I'll put it four times here, because you've got to hone down so much 
that that's the only way for it to work. I mean, generalists will do, do they'll do well, but specialists are the one, ones in this world which really rock it. Um, number three is around trust in the process and enjoying it. Now, you can, you know, you can get the results, you can get the shiny trophies and stuff at the end, but, but I've found the people which kind of are interested in what you've achieved, they'll acknowledge what you've achieved, but actually it's the process and the journey you took, and that's, what's, that's what they're looking to emulate, and that's what they're interested in. Um, finally, take action. Or well, number four, just do it. I mean, take any action. Do anything but nothing. And, and you know, finally, just embrace the unknown. Um, I got some incredible benefits from this, not least, you know, the, the monetary results. So who knows what you could you could achieve there? Um, but I'll leave you I'll leave you with this. I mean, I definitely felt like from that halftime point, I really made a comeback. And you know, if you haven't already, when is your second half going to start? So, Nick Burnett, thank you for your time. And it's been a massive honour and a pleasure all year and especially today. So thank you.